So it's easy to feel like you're going crazy when most pundits and politicians are constantly gaslighting us about the ongoing genocide that our government is supporting. But I want you to know that you're not alone. We are not alone because this isn't unique to the United States. In fact, people in Canada, the United Kingdom, and other Western countries are all being fed the same exact lies about this genocide that we are. So I want to talk about the UK because one student named Fiona Lali, who's a pro-Palestinian student protester, actually had the opportunity to confront Suella Braverman, who's a Tory politician, on a right-wing news network in Britain. And this was clearly supposed to be a propaganda segment where the host and Suella tried to make an example out of Fiona by demonstrating how irrational and uninformed these crazy anti-Israel student protesters are. And they probably thought that Fiona was the perfect student to bring on because she is not just pro-Palestine. She's also a pretty active leftist. She's also a communist revolutionary party member. I think she's actually an official from the communist revolutionary party. So I'm assuming that they thought they struck gold because they thought they can use her to make a point that they wanted to make to demonize all protesters and say hey look at this crazy one here uh this is what they're all like but the interview did not go as planned because fiona effortlessly dismantled every single one of their talking points and easily demonstrated how clueless they were and what she accomplished in the process of this 18 plus minute long interview it's a masterclass. Like, everybody needs to watch this and take notes because the way that she dismantled their propaganda and responded to their talking points is how everyone, I think, should be responding to the bullshit that we're seeing. But I want to give you some additional context before we get to the interview itself because Suella and the propagandist in question actually visited a student encampment to fish for sound bites, I'm assuming, to make them seem dumb. But none of the students took the bait, and this is what happened when she showed up. Hello. Just wondering if you'd like to uh, have any kind of discussion at all with Suella today? Hi, I'm Suella. I'm keen to find out your views and what you're protesting about. Nothing at all? No? Interested in why you're covering your faces. Is it a COVID or a health measure? No comment. No. Are you, can I just ask, are you students at the university or just from around the area, nothing? No? no fine, okay, interesting. Yeah. Oh, what were you expecting? You know, did you think that maybe people might engage a little bit with you? They feel very strong. Well, these, about these are supposed to be some of the brightest and the best students in the land and uh, taught in the art of articulating their views and expressing arguments in a coherent way. Mm. And uh, I'm interested in hearing their arguments. Yeah, anyone? Engaging and listening. What, was, what would be your, your, your main question to some of the individuals? I'm really keen to hear what your message is to Israel. No. Nothing. Interested to hear your message to Hamas? No comment. Okay. Do you think the hostages should be released now? Well, really no. Is there? Is there? No, oh, not, hey, we keep walking. Not, not very. Uh, Don't know if you would like to have a good chat with today. us, sir. At all today? Hi there. Go on. You, very nice. I'm Suella. Um, can I ask you what your message is to Israel? I'm sorry, but if you have to ask a man what his message to Israel is when he's literally holding a sign that clearly reads visibly Jewish against visible genocide, maybe you're not that bright. Maybe you're the one who should check your ego. But uh, this kind of speaks to how arrogant this individual is because she took their silence as a sign that they just weren't confident enough to speak to her because, you know, if the best and brightest students who are taught to articulate themselves properly won't even engage with her and explain their basic positions, then it must be because they're dumb and they don't know what they're protesting about. She was basically trying to debate, bro, the student protesters. That's how I took it as an American. But... They were smart and they didn't engage. Now, even though she portrayed herself as a neutral person just seeking dialogue with the protesters, they're smarter than that because she is an individual who they know has an axe to grind specifically with Palestinian protesters because she lost her job due to comments that she made about the protesters. As Al Jazeera reports, she was kicked out of Sunak's government after she sparked outrage for an op-ed that she wrote in the Times of London where she attacked the police for not being tougher on the pro-Palestinian protesters. 
protesters who she called pro-Palestinian mobs and hate marchers. But they were literally just peaceful protesters that she didn't agree with. But in her desperate attempt to demonize the protesters, it ended up blowing up in her face because even fellow Tories were like, I think she's taking this a little bit too far. But as a result of that, she's now on a mission to get everyone to see the protesters and the way that she sees them. So that brings us to the studio interview that she set up with Fiona that took place after she visited the student encampment. Now, as you're going to see, the ass whooping starts immediately. So she tries to start off with a basic question and Fiona just backhands her. One of my first questions that I was very keen to ask, I mean, were you at the... The I haven't the Cambridge one, but other ones. Other ones, okay. And can I ask you what your uh, view is of the events of October the 7th? What do, you, what do you think happened on October the 7th in Israel? Well, obviously the camps haven't started because of October the 7th specifically. Right. They're starting, I mean, this week in loads of encampments up and down the country. Um, they've been, like, celebrating and having to, like, memorise the fact um, that this week uh, commemorates the Nakba, which took place 76 years ago which means catastrophe, which is a massive symbol of what Israel has been doing um, for the last 76 years. This isn't about October the 7th. And to start with that is just entirely disingenuous, I think, on your part. I really want to say that I think it's great, actually, that you went to that camp today um, and tried to talk to those students. Um, and you kind of embarrassed yourself, I would say, whilst doing that, because it was a reminder for me, and I'm sure for other people watching, that actually the Palestine movement brought you down and the Palestine movement has the potential to bring down lots of other Tory ministers and the whole Tory government, and not just the Tory government, I would say any government and any mainstream political party that is backing what Israel is doing right now, which is a genocide. And that's what people are protesting. God damn. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but as Fiona was calmly destroying her and calling her disingenuous and telling her how she embarrassed herself and points out that the Palestinian movement actually brought her down, Suella is just sitting there smiling and nodding along because what the fuck else can you do? Because at that moment, I think she realized oh my God, this is not what I expected. I expected somebody who was really naive and ignorant, but this woman actually knows her shit and I'm fucked because I don't. And the look on Suella's face at the end was giving, holy shit, holy shit, get me the fuck out of this to the host. But I mean, the host didn't do a good job of bailing her out because he instead just gave Suella the chance to rebut the points that Fiona was making. But she didn't really know how to do that because... When you realize at the start that your usual talking points aren't going to work, you have to change the script. You have to readjust and adapt. And this is something that, as you're going to see, she wasn't able to do. So what does she choose to talk about? Well, she just doubles down on the implication that the student protesters are pro-Hamas and they support October 7th. But predictably, Fiona claps her cheeks again, but harder this time. Now, as you watch this... Just notice how she nods along as she's getting destroyed. So you're saying your encampment has nothing to do with the events of October the 7th or Israel's uh, response to October the 7th? Okay. Is, that, is that what you're saying? It's totally detached to October the 7th and Israel's response? The only thing that is detached, I would say, is actually your views and your approach to this whole situation and the whole of the Tory government. The people, the student protesters, are very attached to what is happening in Palestine and they are doing what they can in order to stop universities who provide, I think, £450 million to the Israeli state, to the Israeli military, rather than investing in their own education um, and what they should be putting money into you are the one and your government is completely out of touch with what actually the majority of people in Britain think about what's happening. The majority of people in Britain do not support what Israel is doing and actually want us to stop sending weapons. And you were saying today that we should send more, which is completely opposed to what people in Britain actually want. So I think you're detached. Right, so on, on arms. So can I ask you, what's your, what's your view of Hamas? I don't want to talk about Hamas. I want to talk right. about... Why? And the reason that you want to talk about Hamas is because you want to keep justifying spending more money for Israel, right? Sunak earlier, um, a month or two ago, was talking about increasing defence spending to 2.5%. They want to spend loads of money on that, but no money on the NHS, no money on education. You want to cut pensions, you want to cut 
council budgets. That's what the government that you support is doing, which is causing serious suffering in so this, is this country about, as so well. So this is not to do with Hamas. It's not to do with it's Israel. It's about the conservative government. Is this an anti-conservative? You're bringing up Hamas. Of course we're anti-conservative because the right. conservative government is facilitating and supporting a genocide. And not just that, it's also overseeing a horrific set of policies, austerity policies, that are damaging everyone's lives in Britain today. Okay. It is utterly astounding to me that they did not shut this interview down at that point because this is by far one of the most devastating interviews I think I've ever seen a politician do. And everything that Fiona was saying there was absolutely true. And it's not just true for the UK, by the way. It's true for the US government as well, albeit worse, because we have so many crises as well that aren't being addressed. But there's always more money for bombs, right? And to add insult to injury, whenever we talk about things that actually benefit normal people like Medicare for All, student debt cancellation, there's always this question of how are we going to pay for it? But when it comes to military aid and bombs for Israel, that question never comes up. So it's infuriating and it's nice to know that British leftists feel the same frustration with their government that we feel with our government because we're kind of in similar situations. But when we say we don't want our tax dollars funding a genocide, the response is always, oh, well, you must, you know, be anti-Semitic or support Hamas. But it's an obvious attempt to obfuscate. And there's an easy answer as to why we're not talking about Hamas. It's because our governments aren't funding or supporting Hamas. It's funding and supporting Israel. But the whole, do you condemn Hamas or do you think Israel has the right to exist or defend itself? These are all questions intended to distract us from the very real genocide taking place right now. And since politicians and propagandists don't actually want to engage with the specifics of that, since it's indefensible, they played the gotcha game. And this is what Suella proceeds to do in the next clip after Fiona ran circles around her. But as you're going to see, she doesn't take the bait. So you have no view on Hamas and you have no message for Hamas and you have no I'm not here to connection to us. You're not here. Right. No, so you I don't, don't have, have a view. connection to Hamas. OK. And well. so what's your message? Do you, do you believe Israel has a right to exist? Do you, what, what is your message to the majority of people in Britain who don't support you, who hate the Tories, who hate you specifically? Right. You went to Cambridge. No you were saying you were saying I that no answer, you was a fair no, question. I don't want to I don't want to pile, I don't want to okay. pile in and, and look, absolutely you know, crack on as far as I'm concerned. But she, she did ask you a, a direct question. I think our viewers would like to know, do, do you think Israel has a right to exist? I think that's a silly question, to be honest. And I think you're putting, you're asking the wrong questions. You're asking those questions to distract from the central point that I was making, which is that these students, the reason you don't like these student protesters and you don't like these encampments, one, is because they've already brought you down. But it's two, it's because of what it represents, which is a growing movement and a growing feeling in this country, which is against the Tories and against any main political party. You have made that point. I am very are, interested. Although when I did, when I did go there, there were lots of posters about Israel. There were posters about Palestine and there were placards about Gaza. So yeah, we can't yes. completely ignore the issue about what's happening in Israel yes, and let's Gaza. Let's talk about it and I'm asking Let's talk about what the Israeli questions. state has done for the last 76 years. So would you say that Israel has a right to defend herself? Itself. Israel does not have the right to do what it is doing right now, which is a genocide, which is the right. criminal enslavement and trapping people in certain places and then saying you've got to move somewhere else. The ongoing invasion of Rafa that has been so spoken about today, the displacement of millions of people. Of course, they don't have the right to do that. And no one thinks they do. Right. You and you posing those questions is exactly what makes students in Cambridge think, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to any war criminal. I want to grow this encampment. I want to grow a movement. Well, that's, that's quite, it's quite a strong. Stuff that, I mean, as, as war far as criminal, yeah, I, I mean, so yeah, you like, are war criminal. How would you respond? How would you respond to that? I mean, you know, and that, my friends, is how it's done. That clip started with Suella trying to back Fiona into a corner, but in the end, she was the one on the defensive after Fiona called her a war criminal, and you could see how triggered she was by that. Sorry, but I mean. Facts don't care about your feelings. And my favorite part about this is how useless the host is because Suella keeps looking at him, presumably because she wants him to intervene to save her and do some propaganda magic. But his response to the war criminal claim was just, how do you respond to that? Listen, 
you're aligned with her. This is a right wing network. I don't think that she wants to defend whether or not she's a war criminal. So the fact that you put her in that position kind of just shows how bad you are at propaganda. Maybe take some cues from American propagandists. But I mean, this was supposed to be a 2v1 debate, but my guy is <laughs> he's leaving Swala out to dry. And it makes it so much more funny because she's scrambling. She's probably panicking on the inside, doesn't know what to do. She tries to play it cool, but the host is just He's useless. Now, he does, in the end, try to come through and try to back Fiona into a corner. They try to team up. Doesn't really work out. But in this next clip, Fiona basically spotlights the disingenuous ways that politicians use Hamas to deflect from the crimes against humanity that they're supporting. And what she says here is brilliant. Um, and you talking about Hamas, it's just a smokescreen for their general interests in the region. And it's not just them acting by themselves, is it? America is backing them financially, militarily. And our government is backing them financially, militarily. And students are protesting because they want to stop their universities investing in that entire system. And it's not just the students who are protesting. Obviously, there have been protests all up and down mm. the country, protests that you tried to attack and failed to do. And the protests grew ever since then because you are out of touch with what people actually think and actually want. Well, There's something so satisfying about seeing somebody tell a politician who's out of touch just how out of touch they are because these politicians, they've tried to insulate themselves from criticism to the extent that they can anyways. And what they've done is they've constructed this false reality in order to justify their support for a genocidal regime regime committing crimes against humanity. So seeing the look on her face when she realizes that people aren't buying their bullshit and the talking points aren't working is really satisfying. And I've got to wonder, do they actually think that the lies they're selling us are persuasive because the polls don't reflect that and nobody's buying that. The protests are still happening in the United States anyways. The heckling of politicians is still happening. So they've got to know that nobody's buying their bullshit, but Regardless if they do or not, seeing them be confronted with reality is very, very satisfying. Now, I do want to show you a clip where Suella addresses the comments that she made about the protesters that actually got her fired. Now, I'm sure you can already predict how she's going to justify those remarks. She's going to say that uh, the protesters were being anti-Semitic. Of course. But that's when Fiona comes in with an uppercut and just straight up calls for a liar to her face. And uh, this is probably one of my favorite parts. The issue of the march is, of course, everybody has the right to peaceful protest and expressing their views. But what we have seen, and I'd be interested in your views, is anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen from yeah. the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That is an anti-Semitic chant yeah. calling for the eradication of Israel, the eradication of Israelis, and the eradication of Jewish people. No, you're a liar. You're a liar. On every single one of these mass protests, right, there is a huge Jewish block. In all of these encampments, the encampments that you went to today, even in Cambridge, talking about all this kind of stuff, the Cambridge group, um, Cambridge Jews for Justice, they said, you are weaponizing their identity to promote a culture war. And, that, and that's all this is, because you've got no actual real policies or statements or anything to offer people in this country. Let's be honest, the reason you're here and the reason you went today is because you want to be the leader of the Tory party. You're interested in your career. You're interested in promoting that. So that's why you come out could, with, could your, I ask, with your life. Could, could I ask? I mean, this is, to be honest, I'm completely, um, and that's, oh, it's yeah. completely false to call the march cool. anti-Semitic. People don't believe that. Again, it's a disingenuous way of deflecting from the conversation that they desperately don't want to have. But I've got one last clip to play for you. And it's the closing comments from Suella specifically, because after she gets owned on her own home turf, where the network is much more kind to her, she tries to throw in a few jabs at Fiona and brings up her anti-capitalist views and my assumption is that she thought that the interview would be cut off after she got the last word but of course fiona doesn't let that shit slide and in the last remaining seconds after she gets owned again by fiona suella and the host both try to throw everything at the wall to see what sticks but as you're going to see none of it sticks you know one thing that strikes me is you know the the lack of facts in the conversation and in 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 the debate, uh, the slightly irrational perspective on uh, you know basic uh, facts of our society of which you're a beneficiary like capitalism, but you'll never you know we we won't dis we won't agree on that, and ultimately your refusal to answer basic questions about Hamas and. Israel's right to defend herself right now. It's uh, um, you know it, interesting uh, to hear your views. 
we're not going to agree. I'll give you a fact. 40,000 people killed by Israel. Nearly 100,000 uh, injured in the process. Millions of people displaced. Not a fact. That is a fact. Could and I just ask one, it one, fact. One, more, just one, one more important fact? fact. And you're a liar. Look, look, what, one more really important point. Just to, you know, It's a yes or no, really, before we go. Does Israel have a right to exist? This is the wrong question well, that you're asking. Yeah, yeah. Well, OK. Mm. I, I think that's quite tough. And, and quite, should the hostages right. be released? Listen, like, why is there? Why is this conflict happening in the first place? Who is responsible it's easy for to it? Say yes to Who that. is the responsible? Do you for believe it? women of were course. raped on October the seventh by Hamas? I believe there is a lot of violence taking place across that whole region, and I think Western imperialists are the first people who set up that problem in the first place, and they're continuing to back right. everything that Netanyahu refusing is doing. to condemn Hamas, and you okay. refuse to condemn the whole system that produced all of that Thank violence right. in the first place. Thank both. That was that was amazing and genuinely hilarious because of how fucking desperate they both looked. They exhausted every single option in the pro-Israel dialogue tree that they could. Do you condemn Hamas? Does Israel have a right to exist? I mean, you've done this throughout the entire interview and it didn't work. So why are you trying it again just so you can get the last word? I mean, did you not absorb any of the information that Fiona gave you? You are proving her point. She's trying to talk about the genocide that their government is supporting while you're doing everything you can to avoid that and talk about other things. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about what Israel's doing. Let's talk about Hamas. Let's talk about if you think that Israel has the right to defend itself. It's just such bullshit and shows. And this video is already really long, uh, but I do want to show you one last video, okay? So after that interview went viral, Fiona went on Al Jazeera to do a well-earned victory lap and... The reason uh, she gave as to why she agreed to this interview is something that I want you to hear because I think what she says is important. The reason I went on is because when you watch the news in the UK, BBC News, Sky News, it's like being gaslit on a monumental scale. And I felt like it was important to go on there to say the truth of what is happening and expose these people for what they are. They're getting away with murder. Um, and, and that's why it was important to, to do that. And for someone to just say what everyone is thinking and feeling already, because people are so angry when they come out here with these lies. That's what they're saying in the encampments. That's what they're saying at the protests. And it was necessary to just cut through the hypocrisy that is constantly spewed out by oh. all of these politicians. That's exactly right. It's like we're all simultaneously being gaslit by every single news channel and every single politician, and they're all scolding us about how bad we are. And that's just so intolerable to me because these people who are supporting a genocide are really the last people on earth who should be lecturing anyone else about morality or accusing anyone else of being hateful and supporting Hamas and calling the protesters anti-Semitic because they are the ones supporting and justifying a genocide. Therefore, they're the ones that should be on the defensive. And the fact that Fiona was able to flip the script and effortlessly put them on the defensive once and for all. That is why this interview was so cathartic to me and resonated with me deeply. But I want you all to understand that the reason why propagandists and politicians repeatedly ask people that they bring on if they condemn Hamas or support Israel's right to exist is because they're trying to portray neutral by bringing on a pro-Palestinian voice, but they use those questions to limit the scope of the conversation so they can appear neutral but yet not let the pro-Palestinian voice get the point across. It's what Pierce Morgan does, and it's what this propagandist did as well. So that's why Fiona was so effective, because she cut through the bullshit and didn't get bogged down by the disingenuous gotcha tactics that we've been seeing from the beginning of this genocide. And really, there's no winning, because even if you play their game and you condemn Hamas— it's never enough because months ago at the start of this, we watched a BBC clip on this channel where a man who literally lost multiple family members in Gaza was asked by a BBC host whether or not he condemns Hamas. And even though he kept saying, yes, of course, I condemn Hamas. Well, he was asked the same question again and again and again. She kept bringing it back to Hamas because, again, this isn't about Hamas. This is about distracting from what's actually happening. It's propaganda. So I think the only way to handle these interviews is to just take it over and reshape the narrative exactly like Fiona did. And kudos to her for doing that. Fiona, you were an absolute badass and you made every proponent of Palestinian human rights, everyone who's opposed to genocide around the world, very, very proud. So if you have the opportunity to speak truth to power, I think that emulating these tactics, it's what you should do because as you saw, very, very effective.